who can name that song that the congregation sang the last one? Send the light. That's part of what the ministry that my wife and I do, uh, wagons with provisions, and uh, if we can send the light through y'all's help, it gets the gospel to the lost world, and also it's a love letter to the the saved world when it, whenever they read it and have it in their hands. And I've been to several countries and uh, a lot of people that come to church to worship God, they don't have his word. They can't, they don't, can't afford it or they're not available. So uh, that's where the ministry the Lord's gave me, we try to make that available to them. And uh, I've dealt with about four different printing ministries. And uh, I can get most languages. And uh, in other words, it, it's available. The word is printed and it's available. So we just need to pray and ask the Lord for wisdom to help me get it from y'all's hands to the missionary and the national people and the other countries that need it. And uh, I was thinking back about uh, some of the things that happened last year where I can kind of update you. Uh, we mainly have been picking up supplies such as uh, church furniture. And, and uh, I'm running out of room to store them because I'm running into trouble with the uh, shipping companies with the the coronavirus, some of the third world countries or just regular foreign countries won't let the ships dock and unload. So y'all pray about that. And if anyone knows a missionary in uh, Belize, I have uh, eight cases of Bibles special or earmarked for them. So I need someone with a contact number over there that will distribute them. So y'all pray about that. And uh, this may, maybe someone in here can use this uh, about faith. Because uh, I heard that word this morning, faithlessness. And uh, to do this ministry, what I do is put one foot in front of the other when the Lord gives me something to do because I, I really don't know uh, what's going to be the roadblocks that I've got to deal with, but I don't worry about them. God, he already knows what them roadblocks are and he's got something to undo them, get them out of the way. And I'll give you an example. Uh, I went to South Dakota to take a set of pews up there and I had, uh, when the trip was over with, I had lost the tread on nine tires. And these are all uh, 10 ply tires and they were not dry rotted and they were not uh, recaps. And you'd say, well, boy, that'd make me want to quit. Well, here's what the Lord would do for you. He, uh, I usually take three spares with me and I'd already used my three spares and the Lord, when I got to Colorado, I went into a, uh, a salvage yard and I asked him, I said, uh, I need to get a, a 16 inch 235, preferably a 10 ply. And he looked up at me, he said, uh, well, we just got a wrecked truck in, and I bet they ain't got a thousand miles on six of them tires. And my dad, that this was the son talking to me, he said, my dad ain't going to want to sell just one. I said, I don't want just one. I need six. <laughs> and here's what I did. Uh, I, I told him, I said, uh, do you know how much they're going to be? And he said, no. He said, what do you need them for? I said, well, I got a three-axle trailer. I'm taking some pews up to... Dupree, South Dakota, to the Eagle Butte Sioux Reservation. And uh, he looked up at me. He said, that's where my dad's from. So you see, 
you can't out, the Lord knew. <laughs> and anyway, he said, let me call my dad. He did, and he, he told him what I was doing, and he, and he, he said, uh, okay, I'll tell him. And he hung up. He said, my dad said, would you mind giving $50 a piece? These tires are worth $150. They were, they were that new. And uh, anyway, I went and had them mounted and got on up to Dupree and uh, unloaded the pews. And, uh, and a long story would be if I told you where I had the blowouts and how. I will tell you what causes them. When you're loaded heavily and you're going through chuck holes or potholes, it's that outer edge that the tire hits, it's like creasing a piece of paper and it creases them belts and that's why you lose your treads. And then the other thing, and y'all need to know this because it'll help y'all. When they're resurfacing uh, the asphalt, when they come to bridges, they're made out of concrete, and that's a sharp edge, and they usually drop down three to four inches. Y'all need to slow down on them bridges because it will eventually, you won't blow the tire out when you hit it the first time, but about a week or two weeks later, you, you anyway, you have a flat tire, and you usually lose the whole tread, and it's from, from them ed sharp edges. Well, it doesn't... I mean, once I got to Dupree, you know, I had six good tires on, and I had, I think I saved two of the other ones, because some of them, the missionary there that I went to, he said, you got a knot on this tire right here. He said, that thing's going to blow out any minute. And so we changed that one, and that took away another spare. And here I come home, and I get into, out of Memphis into Mississippi, now here's where the Lord uh, uh, do something for you to increase your faith because you got to take the first step because he can't do something for you if you don't do your part. And when I got going and you just got into Mississippi and uh, bam, bam, one tire when it blowed out, it made the other one blow out. And so there I was, one wheel holding on that one. They were both on the same side. And I get out and I look and I say, Lord, you know I only got one spare left. And uh, I hear Michael and Gabriel, they're laughing, you know. What's he going to do now, Lord? And uh, I was on an exit ramp because I pulled off. I knew I had major trouble. Anyway, I went ahead and took both tires off the axles, put my spare on. So that was two axles with a tire and a third axle I didn't put anything on it and so I made the exit and went to the it's a little truck stop wasn't one of the big ones and the Lord had someone well let me tell it the other way when I got there I was driving by the uh, station part to park out in the parking lot well I seen a rim and a tire leaning against the banister of the to protect people from driving through their store and I said, I said, Lord, it's not going to be the right lug pattern. It won't be the right size, and it's probably flat. And uh, anyway, as I parked and walked in to ask, who, you know, uh, could I buy that tire? Because I walked by it, and I kicked it. It had air in it, and I counted. It had eight lugs, just like I'm running. And it was a 235, 16-inch, just like I was running. So all them things I said it wouldn't be, it was okay. And uh, the lady said, I don't know anything about it, but that my attendant that's putting water in that car out there, you need to go ask him. And he, he could tell you. So I went out there and I said, uh, can you tell me anything about that tire leaning against the banister? And that's all I said. He said, I don't know whose it is, but it's yours now because it's been in my way for over a month. So the Lord had that tire waiting on me, see? Over a month. Nobody else, everybody could have picked that tire up, but no one had, the Lord wasn't going to let them. And I, that's why it, it, I got experiences like that for 27 years, and that's why I can't quit.
the Lord helps me and increases my faith almost on every trip I go on. And that's kind of why Sandy won't go with me. Because some of them things is pretty scary when you're going down the San Juan Mountains and you see smoke coming out from under the trailer, under the rear of your truck, because your brakes ain't wanting to stop you. And, uh, but I learned how to take care of that. You just don't go down as fast as you go up. And uh, so the Lord, he, he's gave me a lot of wisdom and, and, uh, and understanding. And uh, by the way, I'm leaving in the morning to go to, it's near Gallup, New Mexico. I'm taking uh, 100 stackable chairs similar to these and a baptistry that's 14 foot long. And when I get unloaded there, I'll go to uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And this is something that I've been doing and Brother Rowanna, I know all about it. I've been teaching welding when I go to the, everywhere I go really, they'll need handrails welded or, or a, a sign built to hold their uh, church sign. And I, I do projects for, for them and uh, I teach welding while I'm doing the projects. Because you'd be amazed at the teenage boys and young men that want to learn welding. And anyway, this company out there is rebuilding my uh, welding machine because it's in like a 1950 model, but it welds so good. And uh, they said they weren't going to charge me anything to, to rebuild it. So y'all be praying about that. That was three years ago. This first chance I had to go get it. So um, y'all pray that they uh, don't charge a storage fee. But anyway, uh, after I pick up the welding and generator, I'm going to go to uh, Brighton, Colorado, which is about 25 miles north of uh, Denver. And I pick up, I could just say mission supplies, but a lot of it is uh, reconditioned uh, hospital furniture and equipment. I mean, top of the line. And they recalibrate it, make it just like new. And then I can get uh, dental equipment. And uh, I bring them back to Florida. And I, my sons and I, we palletize them and build crates to protect them. And because shipping is very rough uh, in industry, they uh, <laughs> they're under uh, the quicker they get it done and the more money they make that kind of mentality. So uh, we protect it. And to give you an idea, I just shipped 25 buckets. I say just shipped it. Uh, it was uh, the first of the year to Alaska. And it was school supplies. And in each bucket, we put, uh, as the Lord provides, we, we, we always try to put, uh, since it's school supplies for children, we put the little King James Bibles in them in each bucket. And then we put like a couple John and Romans. And uh, if, the, if we have them, we put the whole Bible in because that way the parents get, will have a, the, the bigger Bible. And I brought that up to tell you this. Uh, I do have a reason I would have liked to took these buckets myself to Alaska, my wife and I, but we just, we didn't, we didn't do it. And I, the Lord let me learn something from it. We had, uh, they call them freight forwarders. And I found out you get the measurements, the height, and, uh, you, you weigh it, you weigh whatever you're shipping. And this weighed about 400 pounds. Now this is gonna knock the socks off of some of you. I called 57 trucking companies, 57. It started out, one of them wanted, uh, well, more than one, but it's around, he wanted $5,200 to ship 400 pounds to, uh, to uh, Anchorage, Alaska. Well, then I called, I kept calling, because there's a deacon out in Texas. He told me, he says, you never, you never call one, two, or three times. He says, you call 10 times. And he said, the Lord uh, 
I'll give you enough answers in that 10 times. And it, it's, it's a lot of truth in that. Well, after 40 something times, I figured I re reached that, uh, you know, that wisdom I needed, but I hadn't. I went ahead and, and they gave me, some, they said, now you ought to check and call this company or they kind of do things to help missionaries. And I'd call them and then they couldn't and they'd give me another one. Well, number 51 said, uh, we'll do it for, it seems like it's around $700. I said, well, there it is. And in some way, the Lord said, you need to call one more. And I did. And I'm, you know, I just had that understanding of you just don't jump when the world says jump. So I called one more time. And that last phone call, they said, we'll do it for about $350. So it went from $5,200 down to $350 to ship that. Uh, is a pallet. I had 27 buckets with tops on it. And uh, it had to go through about three different, uh, I guess you call them warehouses. But they, they would call me, say it's at this warehouse. They received it and it's going to be shipped out whatever day. And it all went really smooth. And uh, the thing that tickles me, uh, when it finally got to... Uh, I guess it was into Alaska. That guy called me. He said, your pallet is here with the, the buckets on it. And he said, I have never seen a pallet prepared or, or can't think of the right words, but put together this good. He said, it come all the way from Florida and they ain't, nothing had to be repaired on it. I put banding straps around the buckets on two different layers and there's ridges in them buckets on the tops of buckets well that would hold them from shifting and you know how plastic is it's pretty slippery well the Lord gave me with that's why I'm telling you this the Lord will not only give you faith but he'll give you wisdom how to do things I put a, a piece of plywood on top it had a pallet underneath well I banded it this way two bands and then two bands this way like tic-tac-toe pattern and they said everything was just perfect so uh, and I've never shipped a pallet in my life <laughs> and uh, I mainly ship school buses and 40-foot containers but it's getting to the point where the missionary might need something important as soon as he can get it and the Lord showed me how to ship individual pallets, and I, I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, a whole church that sh filled the buckets, they uh, uh, enjoyed filling them, and I got to report to them each time the pallet got closer to where it was headed. And it was just the Lord uh, in the whole thing, because normally it wouldn't have worked. And, uh, so he can he can make things work that you can't do and uh, he he had men that never met me never heard of me and they would do what they could to direct me to someone that could help me and I just thank the Lord for that kind of help in this ministry and that's what keeps sanding me keeping on keeping on and uh, y'all pray here's the uh, I guess you call it the bottom line. My my newest truck's a 1999, and uh, it's a uh, a diesel Dodge uh, Dually, and it needs an injector pump. It's uh, 1,800 dollars, 16 for the pump, 200 for them, because they got to have special tools to uh, calibrate it to the valves and everything in the motor. Okay. That's that one. My other one that's older, it's a 1994. And I was going to take it in the morning, but it's got, it's either the intake manifold or the head gaskets. And I'm just, uh, y'all pray. I don't know what that's going to cost, but they got to take the motor apart pretty much to put them new gaskets on. And, uh, 
each one of them vehicles is over 20 years so I don't know how many of y'all would like to make a trip uh, I, when I go to New Mexico Phoenix and Denver we're looking at 5,500 to 6,000 miles by the time I get home and uh, you have to have a lot of faith to drive a 20 year old truck to do that <laughs> so I, I'm just asking y'all to pray for me uh, I'm not taking either one of them trucks and uh, this might be something that some of y'all might want to do uh, I said the same thing in another church I said if any of y'all men want to go out west to some of the Indian reservations give me a call well one did about a week ago and uh, he said uh, I got a new truck and I would love to go out wherever you're going out west I said, I'd love for you to go too. <laughs> and so he's supposed to be there in the morning and uh, y'all pray. Uh, it don't always work out so good because they're not used to uh, putting up with nine blowouts and uh, no breaks when you really need them. <laughs> and uh, so, but the Lord has always protected me. I have not, I, I can't complain or give y'all a bad testimony one time he just always helped me through everything and uh, except my wife going with me and brother Rowan he, he, he tried to help me but it just didn't work did it brother <laughs> uh, see she, she'd been with me a time or two where I went down the wrong road up in Tennessee and I went really up the road and it got from asphalt to gravel, from gravel to uh, dirt. And uh, this is at eight o'clock at night on a mountain with no street lights. I had to back down that road for over a mile with a, with a semi with a 30 foot trailer behind me. And when the front end goes over, you don't see, you see treetops. You don't see no houses and no dirt. <laughs> Anyway, that's why she probably won't go with me is them kind of things. But I told her, I said, I've had plenty of practice in backing up. There's nothing to worry about. But <laughs> she wouldn't believe me. And uh, so y'all pray. I, sure, I need her to go with me because the older I get, the more aches and pains I get. And when you load and unload trailers that stack six and eight foot high, and really, we got them top chairs stacked uh, eight eight chairs high. And I think there's like, I'm going to say about 10 rows of them. And here I am driving 22 hours. And then I'm going to help unload them chairs. And when I go to sleep at night, sometimes I hardly can't get up the next morning. And uh, so I... I I really need her to go with me because she's my navigator. She reads in maps so good and uh, keeps me from going down the wrong roads. And uh, just on and on, she answers the phone. And uh, anyway, I need her. So y'all pray that, that, uh, uh, that she'll go maybe real soon. 